In this example, we're going to build a feedback bump. And so you can see here, I'm asking the user what their experience was on a scale of 1 to 5. If I pick something negative, it's going to be able to understand that I picked something negative and use AI to generate an apology and then ask me to give it some more feedback. And let's say, for example, I decide to change my mind and I say something like, I actually really like the software, love this software, uh, I want to buy it. We'll be able to use AI to generate the sentiment of this and actually perform a response. So let's hop over to VoiceFlow and see how we've done this. Awesome. Here we are in the VoiceFlow project, and you can see it's a pretty simple project. It's got a couple parts to it. Over here, we're using the button step to provide the user with a couple options of what they could decide to rate um, the experience. From there, we're going to have a set step that actually sets a variable. And you can see here what I've done is I just created a button with the number 1 to so the button title 1. And then under the actions part here, I've added a set. And I'm saying to apply this to the ratings number variables, so just set it to 1. So I've done that for each of these here. And so now if the user clicks 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, it's able to save it in that variable. The important thing to note here is I want to make sure that if the user types something, that we're still able to respond. And so what I did was I added a no match. And so you can go here and select no match. And what this does is it creates a no match path to say if the user decides to not click one of the buttons and instead type something, what do I want to do? And so we're saying for the assistant to actually skip this next step and go right to step number three, which is determining the sentiment. In the second step here, we're using the AI step. And so this is uh, allowing us to send a prompt to an AI model. So I've chosen Claude here, where you can use GPT or another one. And we're just saying the user has just given us a rating out of five, um, ask for, apologize for the experience, and then ask um, why they did it. So that's able to generate it. So if I go ahead and say something like preview, and I say four out of five, uh, it's going to be able to show me what the response is. Great to hear your pause experience. Can you tell me more? From there, a user is going to type some more feedback like I did. And now we've got a separate, a separate step here. So here, we're using the set AI step. So the set AI step allows us to create a prompt. And rather than show the response back to the user, we can actually just save that response to a variable. So here, we're doing it in a bit, in a bit of a different way. So rather than asking the AI to create a response, we're actually asking the AI to perform a sentiment analysis. So we want to understand, did the user say something positive, negative, or something ambiguous? It's going to respond with 1, 2, or 0, and then save it in this sentiment variable. From there, we use a logic block, so logic condition, and we're going to define some paths. So we're going to say if the sentiment is 2, it's going to be positive. If it's 1, it's negative. And again, you can add a no match here to say if it's none of the above, we're going to go down a third path. And so that's how we've created this. Now, this allows us to actually go ahead and uh, just kind of save this. If you want to send the information to somewhere else, that's where you can use the API step. So I'd recommend checking out our tutorial on sending information to Zendesk, um, or we also have some documentation on sending it to Airtable. So if I go here and I say, uh, how can I send information to Airtable? This is our VoiceFlow assistant, also powered by VoiceFlow. It's able to look through all of our documents, answer questions. And so we actually do have a couple documents sent into Airtable. It's kind of like Google Sheets, um, but you can do that as well. And so it's going to give you the instructions on how to do that. We've also got some tutorials on sending to places like Zapier and others, uh, so you can go ahead and figure out where you want to be able to connect those to. And all of that's done using our API step here, which allows you to take information or all the variables you have in your project and send them to wherever you want. So that's it for this tutorial. Again, if you have any questions, hop into the Discord and ask us, or feel free to ask our VF assistant down here, which also lets you submit a support ticket. Bye.